we're rolling two, three seconds, we're good to go. And then you can get up and run away. Yeah, that's about right there. Right. There you go, right, man. I think we're going out there, though. Yep. to man wants to die and then after this the judgment so we come here today uh, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ you know the one that uh, hung on the cross they put the nails in his hands they stripped the flesh off his body for our sins yeah Jesus died on the cross for our sins Try and enunciate more clearly and speak more slowly and get your mouth off the mic. So as I was saying, that Jesus Christ died on the cross, a bloody death, uh, it's bloody love, uh, displayed on the cross. For us 2,000 years ago, he died on that cross and three days later, he rose from the grave. But here's the thing, people, he's coming back. The Bible says he's coming back in flaming fire to bring vengeance upon those that know not God and obey not the gospel. Everybody here today needs Jesus Christ. You need him to save you. You're disgusting. Sin is disgusting. Sin is deplorable to God. It's so disgusting that he sent his only begotten son to die on a cross for you. Now the question I have for you people here today is what are you going to do with that bloody love that he displayed for you? Will you continue to trample the blood of Jesus Christ in your willful disobedience or will you repent? Jesus said that unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that coined the phrase hell fire. Jesus is the one that talked more about hell than anybody else recorded in the Bible. He said it would be better to enter into life main than it would to enter hell fire with all your members. He says, if your eye causes you to sin, to pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Jesus said, uh, not to fear the one that can kill only the body. He said, I tell you who you should fear. Fear the one that can kill both body and soul and cast you into hell. Jesus talked a lot about hell. He says it's a place of weeping, it's a place of wailing, and gnashing your teeth. It is not a place you want to go. So Jesus Christ made a way on that cross 2,000 years ago. He died for each and every one of us. And without the blood of Jesus Christ, we'll all spend eternity in hell. But the good news is, you know, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is this, that he was manifested to take away your sin, the very thing that will send you to hell. Jesus Christ was manifested to take away your sin. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's Bible. That's Bible. We come here 
to lift up the name of Jesus Christ today. Jesus Christ said, if my name be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. And Jesus Christ is drawing you today by the sound of my voice. With our banner, with our, our gospel tracts and our signs, Jesus Christ is drawing you today. The question is for you, what will you do with that drawing? He's drawing you. Will you draw near to him? The Bible says you need to draw near to him. The Bible says draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. You sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to your your laughter be turned to mourning, your joy to gloom. Be sorry for your sin. And why should you be sorry? Because I just explained before that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your filthy, disgusting sin. And he displayed his love. Now people like to hear about John 3.16 a lot. About how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. There's a warning right there. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. And a lot of people profess Jesus with their mouth. But they deny him with their lifestyle. They go to church. They put their money in the offering plate. They sit in a pew while they have wickedness in their hearts. And the Bible says that God does not hear your prayers. Uh-oh. If you regard iniquity in your heart, according to Psalm 66, 18, that God does not hear your prayer. According to John chapter 9, verse 31, God does not hear the prayer of sinners. So, preacher, you might ask, how does God hear us then? Well, that goes back to James chapter 4. I was quoting it before. That cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Jesus will hear your prayer of repentance if you truly, truly mean it. Jesus will hear your words of repentance if you truly mean it by showing fruit Meet for repentance, not shaking your head at the preacher while you're on your way to hell. That's showing fruit, uh, ungodly fruit. And me and my uh, and my two friends here today, we are fruit inspectors. Now uh, we come here to judge and bring righteous judgment, according to John chapter seven, verse twenty-four, where Jesus said, "Judge righteous judgment." My name is Judge Marvin. Here in the black shirt, you got Judge Johnny, Judge John, and you got Judge Daniel holding the banner here. And we're here to bring righteous judgment to Owensboro today. Now, we don't judge according to our standard. We judge according to the Holy Bible. That's our standard. A Holy Bible, it's got 66 books, and we preach the whole truth. We're going to give you the whole truth today. Jesus said, Those whom I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So we're going to bring some rebuke to you today, some reproof to you, because you need to repent of your sins. If you don't repent, you're going to perish in hell. There's no purgatory, folks. You live, you die, you get judged, and it's heaven or hell. Heaven or hell. That's your choice, people. We can't make that choice for you. You got your own free will. No purgatory. No magic bead rubbing will get you into God's kingdom. No pope. No priest. The only way is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, in the life and nobody and I mean nobody comes to the Father but by me those are the words of Jesus nobody comes to the Father but by Jesus Christ not by the Pope not by your priest or your pastor mommy or daddy no the only way is Jesus Christ 
but you mommies and daddies should be leading your children in the fear of the Lord and raising them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord that they won't depart from it. This is a loving message today that the God of the Bible sent some three loving street preachers down here today to warn you. To warn you about what? About his wrath that's to come. John the Baptist said, flee the wrath that's to come. Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. And what does it mean to repent, you might ask? You might wonder, what does it mean to repent? It means change your mind and change your heart about your sin. Because your sin, the wages of sin is death. And your sin that separates you from God now will separate you for all eternity in the lake of fire. Where you'll burn. God doesn't judge. Burn. Oh yeah, God judges, all right. He's going to judge you. God's going to judge you. One day you're going to stand before him. It's appointed. Hebrews 9.27, get your Bible out. It's appointed unto you once to die and then after this to judgment. You better believe that God judges. You better believe it. And the Bible says that the saints, no, I'm not talking about Catholic saints, the saints shall judge the world. And so we judge according to the Holy Book, called the Holy Bible, written by holy men, inspired by the Holy Ghost. So we tell you today what Jesus said, you must be born again of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's right, amen. And tell people about it too. You become born again. You're wearing a white jacket, sir. You need to. You need to give people, let people know that they need to repent. Right. Amen. If you're right with God today, then you should be uh, spreading the message yourself. Open air preaching just happens to be one of the best ways to do that. We can preach to all you people at one time today. Praise the Lord. Uh, freedom of speech and freedom of religion in this country. And the freedom of assembly, hallelujah. God, and it's also a God-given right, of course. And we praise God for the right to preach His word today to you people who need to repent. Repent and believe the gospel. Belief means obedience, folks. Belief is not just an outward uh, showing. It's not just some uh, outward thing you say, a one, two, three, pray after me. Obedience. It equals obedience. Jesus said, if you love me, John chapter 14, verse 15, keep my commandments. If you say you love Jesus, prove it. How do you prove it? By keeping his commandments. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Jesus said to show people love. I'm just talking about love right now. Do you love God? Do you love God, man? You want to talk about love? Let's talk about your love. What is that drink in your hand? Yeah, what's that drink in your hand? I hope that's not alcohol this early. I hope not. That's good. That's good. Be sober. That's right. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want to see any catholics out here today. We to see people living pure and holy. Time to get right with God, folks. It's real simple. So Jesus said to love. The you know people want to talk about love. Let's talk about love. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you say that you love God and you do not keep his commandments, then you are a liar. Liar liar pants on fire revelation 21 verse 8 says that all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire yeah we come here to warn you we come here to judge you today and let you know you need to get right with god what would be really good people is if you would judge yourself the bible says if you would judge yourself you shouldn't be judged uh, but most of you people don't know how to judge. That's the problem. You'll say, don't judge, preacher, don't judge. God doesn't judge. God's warning. 
<laughs> He's not going to judge. Oh, yeah. We do this for free. It's appointed unto man wants to die. And, and then, then after this, the judgment. Judgment day is coming. You don't like Jesus? You're going to go to hell then. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to heaven, praise the Lord. We want you to go to heaven too. That's why we're out here preaching today. We care about your soul, ma'am. We care about you. We don't want anybody to go to hell. Nobody has to go to hell. That's the truth. But Jesus said, wide is the road and broad is the way that leads to destruction. I tell you that narrow and difficult is the way that leads to everlasting life. Listen up. But only a few will find it. Do you hear that? Only a few shall find the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Amen, brother. But a lot of people are knocking on the devil's door today. A lot of people are going out to get drunk, get high, and get wasted. Right? You Catholics. And so we're here to warn you to flee the wrath of God. Thank you for making me your number one preacher today, sir. I pray that you repent. And people, you mock the preacher, you stop at the preacher. This is all going to come back to you on Judgment Day. A lot of you are storing up wrath on the day of wrath. There's a day coming, people. It's an awful day. It's going to be awful for you. Your life is but a vapor. That's right. Here today and gone tomorrow. Your life is like a puff of smoke. It disappears so fast. You don't have much time on this earth. You only get one shot. You only get one shot. That's all you got. That's why we're here today and we have a sense of urgency in our voices too. Because we know that any one of you could die today and you'll end up splitting hell wide open for your sins. Because sin is the great separator. It separates you from God. It will separate you for all eternity.